<clears throat> let's um let's go ahead and get started. Um, so it's one o'clock, and I, th I think we don't want to encourage too many people to to come in late. Um, so great. Um, well, maybe we'll give it another minute because because sometimes I, I still see a lot of people kind of jumping on, uh, and we do have a yeah, lot. It's still of time. growing. Yeah, we do have a lot of time on the on the in the program to to make up things. So. We've been running a bit of an online workshop since April that we named after after Ron in part, and uh, you know people have been coming in right at the last minute. So um, I guess this is great. So okay, good. All right. Um, so I, you know I know a lot of people um, uh, wanted to participate in this, and I'm, I'm very happy that we could get a lot of people to participate. Um, so. So today is um, a bit of a momentous day. Um, we are kind of meeting today to officially inaugurate the Ron Jones um, International Seminar. Um, we had hoped to do this in person, but obviously um, events uh, got in the way. Um, um, but I guess there's a, the silver lining of that is we can include a lot more people in this um, than we would otherwise. So I think Ron would appreciate it that, um, you know, uh, trade costs are affecting um, the way we do everything these days, right? Um, and so we, we can sort of be in lots of places at the same time now. So, um, so you know, I, I think um, today I just wanted to make a few remarks um, and then turn, the, turn this over to what's largely been um, an initiative that's been run by, um, you know, some of Ron's former students, uh, friends um, inside, who've been in the department or outside the department. Um, so, and you know, I think it would also be nice, Kit would like to make some remarks as well. So, so as, I, as I wanted to say, this is really a momentous event um, that's more than, more than 60 years in the making. Um, you know, Ron has been, uh, came to Rochester in 1958 and has had an amazing impact on our department. Um, but he's also had an amazing impact on the whole world. Um, I, I can't tell you how many people have told me that they've, that, uh, Ron is their, you know, intellectual uh, uh, spirit guide in some respect, some sense. Um, Mark yesterday was telling me how, as an undergraduate at Ohio State, he was um, taken by a footnote uh, in the Caves Jones textbook on the clearest presentation of optimal tariffs. Um, and so, one thing we know about Ron, despite being just an, you know, amazing scholar, he was also, uh, he is also, an, uh, has been an amazing ambassador for. Um, international trade and economics and basically has brought international trade to, to the masses um, through his textbook and through his work and some of the papers we'll see at this conference will you know have deep deep debts to uh to ron's um ron's research um, i think lorenzo caliendo's paper we'll see a lot of it um in there so i i don't want to you know spend a lot of time summarizing all the great things ron's done um you know i, I think uh, the one thing I did want to say is Ron and Kit have um, been really influential in creating an, an amazing environment at the University of Rochester. It's something that um, I hadn't really appreciated. Um, I mean, I appreciated and was a little bit envious of it, at being a Penn graduate and, um, you know, meeting lots of Rochester uh, students. Um, I worked with Mike Dotsie, Chatterjee, I know Hal Cole quite well, um, Leo Hanian, um, lots, of, lots of people, and I've always been very impressed. Um, with them as economists, but um, they also have like an amazing, um, you know, uh, feeling for Rochester. Um, and I think a lot of that owes back to, we've been very fortunate to have some amazing faculty over the years, but we've also had, um, you know, Ron and Kit um, as amazing, you know, guides for this department. Um, having gotten to know Ron a, a little bit and Kit as well, um, you know, they care so much about the students. Um, they've, you know, had history of, of you know, guiding our department forward. Um, and I think, you know, that, that's what sort of brings us here today is, you know, we, we've, we've decided to create this initiative to name the seminar after Ron. Um, it's something that was started almost a year ago exactly when Makoto Yano came back to Rochester to kind of visit again. Um, and I know many people make the pilgrimage back to Rochester year in and year out. Um, and, you know, this initiative sort of built from there and brought in Jose and we've spoken to lots of people. Um, one of the things, you know, we see here is that you know, everyone wants to give back. And we, we um, I want to sort of thank all of the 
uh, our students um, and Ron's friends for contributing to this fund um, and providing a way forward for our department to continue to have uh, a big role in you know, educating graduate students, bringing um, top researchers to the department. Um, and we really appreciate, appreciate that. So, um, so you know, I, I think people really don't want to listen to me talk too much. Uh, what I'd like to do is, uh, I know Kit wanted to say a few words. Um, and so let me kind of turn it over to Kit. And then I think we'll have a few other people talk. And, um, and then, you know, if there's enough time, we can kind of open it up. Um, I think, um, and then we'll kind of start the seminar at hopefully at 1.30 with Ellen and who um, has, you know, very strong Rochester connection as well, having spent some time here. Um, so Kit, do you want to, do you want to say a few words? I do. Thanks, George. Um, thank you very much for your kind words. Uh, and, in, and um, kind of trot down the history of uh, our, our participation in the environment, I, in the department. I think I might be probably the institutional memory of the department now. I think I might be the oldest um, or have had the longest years associated of anyone. So um, I hope my memory um, holds out for a while so we can keep including all those wonderful people right from back in, when I first came in 1969. Anyway, um, there are a few things that I did want to say, um, and I have to explain that Zoom makes me very nervous. So with apologies to Ron, I'm going to be reading. <laughs> he, as some of you well know, would seriously disapprove. Um, let me begin just by explaining that Ron now lives in a memory care home. His dementia developing over the last decade or so has advanced to the point that he really needs <clears throat> more care than I can give him and some special care. So I do want to reassure everyone who's concerned about him that he is content and comfortable. And amazingly, he's still very much himself. Um, I hear from one of the aides at the home where he lives that he has recently taken it upon himself to uh, walk around the nice little home where he lives and check up on everyone who lives there, including some of the aides, just to, just like he once did in the halls of Harkness. So I visit him um, as much as is allowed uh, these days under COVID, but because his cognitive and language um, abilities are so diminished now, I, I, I've resorted to telling him stories um, and the stories he most enjoys, um, I have to say, are about the department and um, the stories about all of his students and many of you here. His face lights up, I can tell you, when he says, your, when I say your names. Just as I'm sure it once did, when many of you visited his office to talk about models or seek his advice or um, on your thesis or just about anything, I think. I, I think, you know, I'd like to claim for Ron that, that he really did see a shining core of wisdom and individuality. Obviously, I had to write that down in each of you, but it's true. And every student and colleague he encountered and that his way was to respond to each person with a sincere and selfless interest. My kids and I really struggled about how to express that quality that Ron had. He was incredibly democratic. He wasn't elitist. Um, he didn't discriminate against anybody. My daughter Polly was telling me about one of her teenage friends who was kind of a troublemaker and um, generally unpopular. She ended up being a very successful grown up, obviously. But, but um, Ron always greeted her with open arms and he was as interested in her as he was in, you know, one of the sort of superstars in his field. Anyway, some of you have been, uh, some of you here have been close uh, intellectually um, or as friends to Ron and myself through the whole arc of his career. I wanted to take this moment to remember one in particular, and that's Fumio Day, who died about five months ago, well before his time. <clears throat> some won't know who Fumio is. He spent most of his career in Japan. But he was a, a Rochester PhD and a student of Ron's in the 70s, and he went on to become one of Japan's leading researchers in trade. He and his wife, Maiko, were superstar hosts to us in Japan over our many trips there. 
and both were incredibly loyal to Ron and the Rochester Department. Fumio's passing is much grieved by us and, and by his friends and colleagues internationally. And um, that brings me to gratitude for the fund with its great potential for advancing internationally Ron's ideal scenario of doing trade theory with his friends. To the extent that the fund will support serious scholarship along with collaboration, personal connections, and a sense of community of interest in trade, it'll be most successful, especially measured against Ron's own personal values. I'd also like to add that it's, um, the fund is a really meaningful legacy uh, for me and for his family. Um, I and our kids, my, our five kids and our older grandkids have been moved to tears by some of the really kind messages we've received as it has developed. So um, just to wind it up on a personal note, when I try to explain um, the fund to Ron these days, I have to say he really doesn't get it. Um, it's a little bit beyond his um, conceptual uh, abilities now. But when I tell him a story about his students and his friends talking about trade together for an hour or so, and here's my punchline, with a party afterwards, his face just lights up with joy. I know that if he could, he'd join me in expressing his deepest gratitude to George and to all those who participated in making this marvelous tribute happen. One of, um, one of the many dear friends from back in the day, Jose Shankman, is here today. And Jose, I believe you might be up next. So with that, over to you, Jose. Thank you, Kit. Thank you, Kit. Jose. Thank you, Kit. Um, it is really an enormous pleasure to, to salute my friend, teacher, and co-author, Ron, and also my friend, Kit, on the occasion of inauguration of the Ronald Jones Seminar in International Economics. Ron Jones is, of course, a major figure in international trade theory in the last century. More generally, he was one of the main contributors <clears throat> to the project of deriving comparative statics in simplified general equilibrium models of production. In Ron's case, usually two countries, two factors, and two goods, though not always exclusively. What's interesting about this research is that it proved that general equilibrium was not only a tool to examine the important question, I've spent my time sometimes in this method of the consistency of a set of assumptions, but also a tool to study in unified way applied questions in many fields. And uh, here I'm quoting from Jones' uh, pioneering paper in JP 65, in which he mentions errors, which in, in which he touches errors such as public finance, international trade, and economic growth. And then if, I won't go on more on this, but a, a remarkable fact about that paper, it's also how he understood duality at a very, very early stage, before this, all this stuff became formalized, which is the formality that we now all use, both in, in theory, but also in empirical work. Um, Ron's accomplishments as a researcher are truly you know, remarkable, but today is also a day to, com com as kids say, to commemorate Ron as a mentor, teacher, and friend. So I arrived in Rochester, I spent Two and a half years in Rochester's PhD program between 1970 and 1973. Um, and the faculty at that time, like in many other peers in Rochester, including today, uh, had some very, very impressive researchers, Lauren McKenzie, Ron Jones, Sherman Rosen, Bob Fogel, which split his time between Rochester and Chicago. But Brock was here when I was in my first year, and Rudy Dorbush when I was here, you know, in, in my last portion here. But the weather in the city, I must confess, made it very difficult time, very difficult to be here for people who had spent all their lives, which wasn't that long at that time, uh, in sunny Rio de Janeiro. You know, it was actually also a very interesting city at that point, like my wife Michelle and I. Now, it has already been said that Ron was really a gifted teacher. You know, a class by Ron was like one of his papers. The equations are always complemented by clever diagrams 
and some verbal constructions that were too elegant for a foreigner to appreciate then, but now I understand how beautiful they were. And also, uh, after spending time with Ron later, I, I could fully understand that he was really gifted in verbal construction. But Ron was also extremely friendly, and Ron and Kit really worked at making the lives of Rochester graduate students happier, a happier life, to give us a happier life. So I really remember the very late evenings at Ron and Kit's, where a group of us would have a meal, would drink, talk, often dance. I can tell that I picked up at least one bad habit with Ron from that time that I still have, which was drinking good wines from Bordeaux. <laughs> um, I also remember, you know, Kit, I think, would be happy to know that when Makoto Yano and I had this idea of what could we do to, to, to do for, you know, to honor Ron, we're sitting in a very good restaurant in Tokyo, and drank a lot of sake and beer beforehand, and that probably motivated us. So that was the kind of spirit, the kind of situation that Ron would have liked to, to know about how to, their friends, his friends were spending time. I also remember, of course, the many conversations I had with Ron about a career in the US, you know, that's something that I did not envisage when I came here as a graduate student, and about going to Chicago when I got the offer. I was very lucky to come to Rochester, but especially lucky that Ron, who had resisted many outside offers, was here, and that he and Kit have been my friends for now more than 50 years. Thank you, Kit. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, Jose. Um, those are wonderful words. So I think we'll, we'll now move to Pe Pedro Guimaraes, who, who wanted to say some words. Pedro was a student of Ron's as well. So Pedro, please take it away. Thank you. I am a little emotional myself. Uh, uh, Ronald Professor Jones is uh, a father figure to me. I am probably the last student, uh, last graduate student, uh, and he was my mentor, not only as a professor, but as exactly a father figure. And I remember that my father has died, passed away, more or less at the same time that I was uh, finishing my PhD. And Professor Jones told me, uh, we discussed several things. And one of the most important points is that when I, I wanted to come back to Brazil to help Brazilians, uh, especially the poor people, because I never had a lot of money. And he told me that it was extremely important to finish the PhD to be able to help. Uh, and I think that what he told me almost 20 years ago ended up correct because I was a, a banker but two years ago, when President Bolsonaro won the election, uh, I became part of the economic team. And I, now I am the CEO of the largest bank in Brazil, Latin America, with over 130 million clients. And in this COVID, uh, we have been paying over 90 million people every month. Brazil has uh, probably $80 billion and I'm sure that this is part of his legacy, because for sure, if it wasn't him, I wouldn't be here. And I'm sure uh, that this is something that shows how great Ronald Jones is, because my dissertation is about privatization. It was not his field, but uh, we ended up with a dissertation that had uh, fragmentation, globalization, but also include privatization. So my point here is that even though I did not enter uh, the theoretical uh, points, and I spoke with Sheikman sometimes, he's uh, a hero for me, the, the best Brazilian economist ever. Uh, what I think uh, I can contribute is exactly by this. Uh, Ronald Jones is someone that is much more than a professor, a theoretical. He is a great, great guy. And when I needed the most, he, he was. <laughs> Sorry, kids, I, I didn't know. Uh, we have been away for a long time, but I really love him. 
just one second. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you, Pedro. Ron talked about you for years and years and years. You were a great friend to him. Thank you, Pedro. Uh, um, and and it, it's been uh, it's been a pleasure to get to know people who I didn't know before in this in this process who who care so much about Ron and, and the department. Um, so I think we'll, we'll move on to Bai Zhu Chen. Um, wanted to say a few words. And... Thank you, George. Um, my name is Bai Zhu Chen. Uh, probably many people are not familiar with me. And I arrived in Rochester, 1985. And that was the first time I left my home. And that was the first time I took an airplane and they shipped me all the way to Rochester, a city which I was not able to pronounce properly. And it was quite a miserable time actually for me. And uh, I never took an economics. Uh, I had no economics training. The only thing I learned when I was in my own country, China, it was das capita, and which means that I, we shall bury you to capitalism. And so I arrived in Rochester, the heart of the market economy works, right? And, but it's kind of a big cultural shock for me. So I wasn't sure that the why I was in Rochester. And, uh, and for someone who spoke a broken English and uh, facing tremendous culture shock, it was very, very challenging. Uh, but the good thing was that uh, I met Ron and uh, Ron was the first few faculty professors that I met. He always, <coughs> um, he was my student like Pedro just talked about. He was, uh, you know, he, uh, he would frequently he would stop uh, me and uh, we chat in the hallway in the Harkness Hall. And he always uh, uh, put up uh, a very charming, humble, encouraging smile when he and I carry conversation. And uh, he, when, when I say something um, didn't make things clear, he would always be very patiently uh, waiting there, um, you know, gently nodding his head and uh, encouraging me to, to speak slowly. And that was, uh, you know, that made me feel like I was welcomed. Those simple gestures, and by Ron, Ron probably didn't realize this, but it made a tremendous impact on my life. That's why I decided to choose uh, international economics as my field, and I did my degree there. I built my career built on this. I did a teaching. I do a lot of engagement, speak engagement. I do a lot of consulting and all based on international economics and all built up in, in my time in Rochester. And even to this day, and when I think about Ron and his a charming, humble, encouraging smile always comes to me and I always remember his smile. And this is uh, to a foreign student, didn't speak good English at the time, that means a lot, that means the whole world. So that's why when they, when Rochester came to me, say, you know, we're going to launch this fund. I said, this is a great thing. You know, I will be 100% support. I'll be very willing to do anything that I can. So yes, I hope that uh, the long legacy will continue. will benefit all the future Rochester students. And uh, yeah. And uh, would love to, you know, unfortunately couldn't see Ron today, but uh, wish him well. Thank you. Thank you, Kit. Thank you, George, for giving the opportunity. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Baizu. Thank you, Baizu. Um, and, and now we'll go to uh, Rick Bond. Um, yeah. So I consider myself very fortunate to have been uh, Ron's student, and uh, I owe a great debt to him. Um, he was clearly an intellectual leader uh, in the field, as, as Jose laid out. Uh, but he also, for me, was a great role model as an expositor and salesman of his ideas, uh, very generous in his support uh, of his students. Um, amazing energy. I, I wasn't surprised to run into him anywhere in the world. Um, 
and I remember one time uh, I was in, uh, uh, I had a conferences lined up, one in uh, uh, Denmark and one a week later in Hong Kong. And I was kind of saying, trying, debating over whether I could handle that trip. And of course, Ron was at both of them and he was in his 80s at the time. So uh, it was just amazing. And, and his, his approach to problems continues to influence me uh, to this day. And so I think this workshop is a great way of uh, honoring his contributions. Thank you very much, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Good you. Please, Kit. Um, so I think we were going to go to Jerry Green next. Thank, thank you so much. Um, let me, Jerry, let's spotlight you. Okay. Well, thank you so much for uh, for including me, and uh, thank you to uh, to George and and especially to Kit. Uh, I have known Ron for fifty five years. By my calculation, I'm probably the only person here who uh, knew Ron before Kit did. <laughs> but I was an undergraduate at Rochester before being a graduate student. Are and you the first time. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I met Ron uh, was 1965. I was taking an undergraduate seminar from Robert France. So many people here may not know Robert France, but he, he's an economist, but he was the provost of the university when, and he taught an undergraduate seminar in trade. And Ron came as uh, one of his guest lecturers, and uh, I was immediately struck by his mind and also by his worldliness and graciousness and that uh, that was uh, it was just very striking he wasn't like any other faculty member i ever met uh, i stayed at rochester for graduate school starting in 1967 and of course you have to take the first year theory classes and i had price theory two from ron uh the spring term the fall term was taught by grandacus uh i got a well-deserved b plus as a grade and Ron never let me forget that. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. That's what I, that's what I deserve. Uh, but it was a great class uh, as everything that he taught, crystal clear and uh, a wonderful experience. And I also absorbed some uh, trade theory, even though I didn't take it as one of my fields. Uh, but my very first paper in economics started out as a term paper for Bob Fogel's course in economic history. And what did I do? Naturally, I just did a minor extension of a Jones style trade model, which uh, is usually a two by two by two kind of model. So in my case, it was a three by two by two model. I had a non-traded goods sector and uh, basically did the, the, uh, the standard extensions of, uh, of trade theory to that case. But I applied it to uh, a calibration having to do with the tariff of 1857. So that's what made it economic history. But it was really a Jones paper. And uh, it, Ron was very helpful to me at that time. It's still the very first paper I ever wrote. Uh, I want to say a couple of other things of uh, more whimsical nature. You know, Ron was a great advisor and a great mentor. And I always wanted to be like him. I wanted to experience the world the way Ron Jones would have. But of course, I was a 23-year-old kid and never been out of the country in my life, and Ron was the man of the world, so I couldn't get very far in that, in that dimension. But I want to tell one story, which is that in 1970, when I got my PhD, uh, left after seven years in Rochester, left uh, Rochester for Cambridge, Mass. And um, in 1970, there was the Second World Congress of the Econometric Society was held in Cambridge, England. And so of course I talked to Ron all the time and I told him I'm going to give a talk in Cambridge, England at the World Congress. And he took me aside and he said, look, don't just go to the Congress in Cambridge, England. You have to go to London. You have to experience London. And this is the way you do it. You go out and you buy this book. I don't know if you can see this book. <laughs> <laughs> we still have a... Story and guide to London. He said, buy this book. This will be your guide. You can get around London with this book. So I did. I went into a map store and I bought the book. The print is very small, but I still have it. 
And indeed, I did just what Ron said. I went to Simpsons in the Strand. I went to the theater a few times. I had a great time. I had the illusion for a couple of days that I was just like Ron Jones, which, <laughs> of course, is not the case. But, but I did enjoy it, and I still, uh, I still remember the whole thing, and it was because of Ron's advice and uh, took me under his wing and, and gave me a great experience, the first of many. Uh, since 1970, uh, my wife Pam and I have uh, tried to see Ron and Kit every time we could. We come to Rochester for many events, uh, McKenzie lectures and class reunions of mine, and, and just sometimes for no reason at all. And we'd always uh, stop to see Ron and Kit and have a meal together if we could. It's, it's been a lifelong friendship, and I hope you'll give him my best. I, I owe him, like everybody else, I owe him a lot. He remembers you, Jerry. Thank you so much. And yes, Jerry. Thank, thanks so much. Um, I think we are going to take a couple more minutes. Um, Sayantani wanted to say a few words as well. So let me put the spotlight on her. Um, there we go. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Kit. How are you? And thank you, George. Um, I don't think anybody other than you two probably know me. I, I do see Shamim on the list, so hi Shamim. Um, I was very embarrassed to say a few words because I'm not in academia. I am literally the last student of Ron graduating in 2006 and have probably the least amount of experience and history with him compared to everybody else here. Um, Despite that, I raised my hand and I said I wanted to say some things which you, none of you may know of. So I came to Rochester in 2001, specifically because I was extremely interested in inter uh, international tr trade. And the very first good memories we have are the welcome parties at Ron and Kids Place. Um, we had fun switching the name tags and wearing different people's name tags just to confuse others. <laughs> but that didn't fool anybody. Um, I think I tried to be Larry Epstein for some time. Um, anyway, so I took my qualifiers in international economics and then started working with Ron. And it was very frustrating. And the reason of frustration was nothing to do with Ron. It was completely me. Any idea I came up with, I would bring it up to Ron. And Ron's reaction was, that's a good one. Um, just check the paper from 1967 to make sure it's not similar. So it's like anything and everything that I could think of, he already knew about it. So I decided, you know what, this is not working out for me. Can't do it in trade, let me switch. So I started doing my research in international economics and uh, the effects of corporate governance. And finally, my dissertation started focusing on more and more on corporate finance, decision making, um, and corporate governance. And, um, you know, it, it took me a little bit of embarrassment, like Ron, I'm looking at this as well. I don't think trade is it for me. And I was nervous about his reaction. And he came back to say, okay, what do I need to know about it? And post my master's till my graduation, he read up everything that was needed to be an effective advisor to help me through that. And, you know, I graduated, I was thrilled. He was the main chair, but I don't think any of you are aware of the fact that Ron is actually an expert in corporate finance as well. <laughs> so that is the only thing I can tell you that nobody here knew. And um, that's, that's my two cents, George. And it's so nice to see you here. Shantani, I remember how pleased Ron was when you got onto corporate governance. And I remember really? coming home and saying, Shantani's onto something really perfect for her. So I think, yeah, it was, it was good. It was good what you did. Thank you, Thank Kit. You I, I didn't, it, it was amazing support. And um, yeah, when he was, was really pleased. It was a great topic. It's, um, that's great. And when I was at the job market, I interviewed with Ernst & Young and ended up the person who interviewed me, Barbara Mays. She did her postdoc in Rochester. And 
So when she found out that I was Ron's student, she's like, wow, you're not a trade theorist. I'm like, well, I tried, I failed. And so by the end of the interview, at the end of the day, we all went for dinner together. And Ron sold me like nobody's business to Barb. Like, if you don't hire her today, <laughs> she's going to be gone. So he's the one who got me my job in EY, and it's been 15 years that I'm with EY now. So it's Ron. Everything in my life, in my career, it's Ron. That's all. And Kit always. But, you know, Ron is just such a towering person. So thank you. Thank you, Kit. My uh, best wishes. So, so um, thank you very much. Um, we've heard some just really heartwarming uh, thoughts about Ron, and we really appreciate uh, those things. I, I say uh, myself as uh, someone who spent 10 years at the Federal Reserve not advising students, um, you know, I, I came to Rochester uh, wanting to work with students. And, um, you know, as I hear all the stories about Ron's interactions with the students, it, it always inspires me to try to be a better advisor and uh, work more closely with, with my students and, and make the most of it. Um, so, so this is great. Um, I, I'd like to um, kind of conclude this, this part um, and kind of shift to the, the seminar part of the conference. Um, we are um, really fortunate to have Ellen Heltman um, kind of starting this part of the conference off. Um, um, Ellen is also a giant figure in our profession and he um, has you know long history with Ron as well. So Ellen, are you there? Let me kind of, um, and I, I want to thank everyone who's, I'm um, here. Okay, great. I want to thank everyone who has participated and supported, um, you know, this initiative and hopefully you'll be able to um, hang around for the conference and interact with each other at, at different points. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, let me just, one last thought is, is, you know, I think Ron is, a, we, we heard stories about how Ron has affected us all and, different ways at different stages of our career from undergrads to graduate um, through, you know, interactions in the field as in postgraduate. Um, and so I think that's really, um, you know, probably the most wonderful tribute to, to Ron um, that we, we could have. So, so let me get Ellen in. Sorry. It's, I think probably at the end of the semester, I'll figure out how to use Zoom. So let's go to Ellen. Uh, uh, uh. If you make me co-host, I will, I need this screen, yeah. Oh, uh, make co-host, sorry. Yes, there we go, Ellen. Okay, can you see my slides? I think you need to, sh not, not yet. I can, your slides are here. Oh. They look great. Perfect. Then it's my screen. Yeah. Okay. Take it away, Eleanor. Okay. Uh, uh, although I'm supposed to talk about the paper, I have to start with a few words about Ron and, and Kit. Uh, it's an enormous pleasure for me to participate in this conference, and I'm very sorry that Ron cannot be here, because when I was a young economist, uh, aspiring to make uh, contributions to the theory of international trade, Ron was my hero. I read with awe and amazement his beautiful papers, such as the paper that uh, Jose mentioned on the structure of simple general equilibrium models, his uh, later paper on uh, the factor specific model is joint paper with Jose on the extension of the basic insights uh, from the factor proportion theory to multiple inputs and sectors. And all of these papers became pillars of our profession. Each one of these papers and many more that Ron has written are beautifully argued with the aid of beautiful mathematical derivations. I had hoped at the time to be able to learn to write such papers until eventually I realized that the best I can do is find my own voice because there was only 
one Ronald W. Jones. I spent my first sabbatical at the University of Rochester. I do not know until this very day, actually, how my mentor at Tel Aviv University at the time, Ethan Berglas, convinced Ron to invite me. Whatever the case may be, I was thrilled to spend a year with my hero, a visit that eventually was extended to two years. Ron was an impeccable host. He made me feel at home in the Rochester Department of Economics. And Ron and Keith warmly greeted my family so that they, all of us actually felt at home when we were in Rochester. These were two wonderful years and we remained attached to Rochester and to Keith and Ron ever after. So I would like to thank Ron and Keith uh, on this opportunity for all you did for us in those distant days. And I would like to thank Ron personally and I hope Keith that you convey to him for his unparalleled contributions to our profession.